Hello, my friends. Happy holidays. Uh, let's get right into this. So I'm going to show you how to set up Black Hole, which is uh, made by Existential Audio. I'm going to show you how to set that up with OBS and whatever DAW you're using. For this example, it's going to be Ableton Live, but this should work in other DAWs as well. So what is Black Hole? Uh, Black Hole is a modern macOS virtual audio driver that allows applications to pass audio to other applications with zero additional latency. It supports up to 16 audio channels and a whole range of sample rates, which is awesome, all the way up to 192 kilohertz, which is crazy. Doesn't add any additional driver latency, and it works on macOS 10.15, which is Catalina. And that's the whole point of this video. So the first thing you're going to want to do is, for OBS, there's a thread online that I've seen in other YouTube videos and forums, which you may all know about already. Uh, but essentially, you have two fixes. The first one is to download a test release, which is going to be found here. Um, that's the current fix I'm using right now, but I have seen other YouTube videos where they run OBS manually from the terminal. Uh, this may be a faster step in the process. Uh, for that, you're just going to want to copy this code here, open up the terminal, run it, and it should run just fine. But if that doesn't work, you could always try the first option, which is to download the test release, which is going to be this link here. After you got that all set up, you're going to want to download the black hole package. You're going to want to click on releases here, click on the latest release, which is 0.2.5. And then you're going to want to click on black hole package down here. Once the black hole is downloaded, you're going to want to double click that. I believe by default, Mac will try to block it. So you'll have to open up security and privacy. So you can just open up spotlight, security and privacy, go to the general tab. And there should be a message around this area here saying, uh, Mac has blocked this. Do you want to open it anyway? You go ahead and open it, install it. It'll have you restart your computer. Once you restart your computer, I'm going to show you what to do next. So now that you have restarted your computer, we're going to want to open up audio MIDI setup. So let's type that in audio MIDI setup. In this section, you should see black hole 16 channel pop up on the left hand side, along with any other audio devices. You have my two monitors on there because I think they come with DisplayPort. You have the default device, which is the Mac mini speakers. And then you have my universal audio Apollo Twin Thunderbolt device here as well. The first thing you're going to want to do is make sure all the devices are set up to the proper sample rate that you prefer. For me, I use 48 kilohertz, so I'm going to go ahead and select 48 kilohertz for my Apollo Twin. I'm going to go up to the Mac Mini speakers, select the same thing, 48 kilohertz. For Black Hole, same thing, I'm going to select 48 kilohertz. The next thing you're going to want to do is create a multi-output device from the default device that comes with your system. Uh, in this case, it's going to be the Mac mini speakers is going to be the default device. In your case, it might say something different. If you have a MacBook, it may say MacBook speakers. If you have an iMac, it might say iMac speakers. Just make sure it's the default device that came stock on your system. To create a multi-output device, you're going to want to click on your default device. In this case, for me, it's Mac mini speakers. Click on the plus sign at the bottom left and click on create multi output device. For me, I already have it set up, but it should pop up like this multi output device here and make sure the master device is set to whatever your default speakers are. Next, you're going to want to make sure the black hole 16 channel is checked as well as your audio interface, which for me is the universal audio Thunderbolt device. On the right side, you're going to want to click on drift correction for the devices that are going to be a slave to the master device. So since the master device is the Mac mini speakers, we're going to want to check drift correction for our audio interface, as well as the black hole 16 channel virtual audio driver. After that, we're going to want to open up sound preferences here. And for output, we're going to want to select multi output device here. Now, when you first play something, it's going to play from everything at once. So it's going to play from your audio interface as well as the internal speakers. So to fix that issue, you're going to want to go to Mac mini speakers or your default device and click on the mute button on the right side over here. Since you don't want the sound playing out of your internal speakers as well as your audio interface. So make sure that the internal speakers are muted by clicking this mute checkbox here. After you have that set up, we're going to want to open up OBS, click on settings, audio and for the first mic auxiliary audio i'm going to select black hole 16 channel for the second one i'm going to select universal audio thunderbolt 
which is my audio interface. Of course, if you have a different audio interface, it'll be a different name, but that's how you're going to have that set up. And at the top, make sure your sample rate is set to the same one as your audio interfaces. Another thing to check is make sure your mic is muted within your audio interface or else it's going to be playing out of your headphones at the same time and that'll get recorded into OBS. So for me, I click on mute here in the console. If I leave it unmuted, it'll start playing in my headphones and get recorded as well. The next thing we're going to do here is set up the mic. So go ahead and click on this little wheel, click advanced audio properties. And the first thing you want to do is set your mic to mono. So click this mono checkbox. The next thing is for mostly for recording purposes. I set track one to the desktop audio and track two to the mic. That way I could manipulate the audio individually in post-production, just in case I want to compress the vocals or lower them or increase the beat in whatever tutorial I'm creating. The next thing we're going to do is just test some sound. So let me open up this song here I have. So you guys should have been able to hear that. Now we're going to go ahead and open up our DAW and make sure that works properly. So within your DAW, or in this case Ableton, we're going to go into Preferences, and we're going to change the audio output device to our multi-output device that we created. Uh, if we leave it on the default, which is my audio interface, and I try to play something here, you'll be able to hear that from your audio interface on your headphones, but it won't be able to transfer to OBS. So in order for it to transfer to OBS, we're going to have to change that to the multi-output device. And this multi-output device also has their different buffer sizes you can change, your sample rate, similar to what you would find on your audio interface. So now that we have changed it to multi-output device, let's try to play that again. You guys should be able to hear that now. And that's pretty much it. One quick thing just to tell you guys, there's a difference between streaming and recording a video through OBS. And one way to keep organized and to make sure you have it set up properly in the audio section is when you record a video, you could go into advanced audio properties here and separate the tracks. So for desktop audio, I have it on one. And for my mic, I have it on two. But if you stream on Twitch or other streaming platforms, you want to make sure that both are checked to number one. Because on a streaming platform, it only could take one track of audio at a time. When I go into settings and I go to output, you could see on the streaming tab, it only lets me select one audio track. But if I go to the recording tab, you could select multiple. So I could select one, two, three, four, five, and six if I want to. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I'm going to release my song, Act Right, either tomorrow or Tuesday on YouTube, and it will officially release on all streaming platforms in a few weeks. Stay tuned for other tutorials and upcoming videos. And if you want to support me on Patreon, I'll throw a link up in the description. You could also join the Discord if you have any other questions about anything I talk about in my videos. Thanks for watching. You don't want to